someone of character and integrity, a wonderful human being, and I truly love him because I understand his soul. He's such a good man, he's the best man I know. We've been through the wars together. And I so appreciate his support and his loyalty for all these years. I greatly respect the Puerto Rican Bar Association. Again, it's been such a great uh, organization for 50 years. It has a history of advocacy for Latinos and for our communities and for the legal profession. Its good deeds, your good deeds, speak for themselves. You also have had a series of presidents of this bar association who have really been terrific leaders. I particularly want to mention my dear friend Roberto Ramirez, who's in your fire, who has done so much good for this community and for the legal profession. I also want to commend your spectacular president, Kathy Torres, who is just absolutely committed and dedicated to the goals of this great organization, and she's such a delight to work with. It has just been my pleasure uh, to work with Kathy over the last year and to know her for so long. The Puerto Rican Bar Association is unique. You know, I know a lot of bar associations around this state. But I can't think of one that is more tight-knit in terms of supporting each other, in supporting the goals of the organization, in speaking out on issues of the day that affect the Latino community and our legal profession, and that works hard to help young people to enter our noble profession, to give them scholarships that allow them to get through law school, which is the law schools are the gatekeepers of our profession, and to allow them to follow in the footsteps of so many spectacular Latino judges. Sonia Sotomayor. Latinos, full partners 
in the court system, placing them in leadership positions and in meaningful roles in our courts and our profession. We've been together a long time doing good things and really talking to my friend Roberto before it was popular to do good things that reflect the rich diversity of our city. So together, I know that we have done a lot of good things to make the courts and the legal system a place where equal justice for all is a reality and not just an ideal. And I look forward to the years ahead to working with this great bar association to make equal justice a way of life in this state for Latinos and African Americans and people of all races and gender and ethnicity and sexual persuasion. That's what we should be doing. That is our mission, that is our goal, and I am deeply honored to be uh, honored by all of you tonight and again a uh, bar association that I feel so close to. So thank you so much. Buenas noches. I have the honor to introduce uh, a great, great Floridian, a great lawyer. Maria Fernandez is the senior counsel and truck and trust and compliance officer of IBM. She is also a proper and loves to dance to the beat of Latin music, likes to travel internationally, and enjoy working as a volunteer for local causes. Maria grew up in the Bronx. She is the daughter of a Spanish immigrant father and a Puerto Rican mother. She is also very proud because she went to law school being a single mother. She was working, raising a family, by herself, and this is really wonderful. And she told me that her mother-in-law is here and that she wanted me to recognize that her mother-in-law is here. So thank you for being here. <laughs> Maria uh, has had a number of positions of increasing responsibilities with IBM, including she was in charge of Latin American issues for about seven years. So she, like she likes to travel, she took the opportunity to visit uh, Latin American countries and knew them very well and knows their issues. She did all these positions, she held them in, in a very, very good uh, form, and she did excel in all of them. So that's why tonight the PRBA recognizes her work with the Corporate Excellent Award. Please join me in welcoming Maria Fernandez.
financial students who came here, many of them, without choosing to come, right? Their parents brought them here for many of the reasons that, you know, my mother does Moka. Is there anyone from Moka?
but I'd like to introduce him anyway. The, the inimitable, the fabulous, Jay Hershenson. Friends, 
uh, for making this night very, very special. And then, of course, I want to acknowledge and I want to congratulate the scholarship recipients uh, and, uh, and the honorees that are here this evening. Uh, I am, you are, uh, an inspiration to all of us, and I am thrilled uh, and really very privileged uh, to be among you. Now, Norma and I stayed in touch throughout the years, and among a number of things that we've talked about, she has kept me abreast of the great work that the Puerto Rican Bar Association uh, has, has done. And you should all feel tremendously proud uh, to be associated with an organization that has served as a model of what a uh, legal uh, professional organization uh, should strive for, particularly in standing up for the Puerto Rican, Latino, and underrepresented communities uh, for more than 50 years. So, uh, and, and this year's theme of, of your gala, uh, Legacy of Excellence, uh, Inspiring a New Generation, demonstrates the continued commitment of this organization to address the needs of supporting and motivating those that follow us so that our community can continue to achieve great successes and great heights. So I'm thrilled to be a part of this. And, but how do we do that? How do we inspire uh, others that follow us and come behind us? Well, we do that by providing leadership, by showing them and demonstrating them to them that see sit with it. Now, it's only been, well, it's been, wow, 15 months ago that uh, Attorney General Eric Holder stood alongside me in my square again uh, as U.S. Attorney for the District of Massachusetts. And I have to tell you that there's never been a job that I've worked so hard at, uh, but that I love so much. Uh, and as the first woman and the first Hispanic United States Attorney for the District of Massachusetts, I have found this It does stop to make me think about the path that led me here today. And I'm reminded of where I come from and uh, really how proud I am of uh, what I've accomplished thus far. The path of my life, which uh, began not too far from here, on 103rd Street in the housing projects, uh, between Columbia and New York. Yes, I will tell you, Riga Baja Puerto Rico. Not knowing, not knowing any English, uh, neither one of them having a high school degree, uh, but they were parents who supported me and who believed that I could accomplish much more than they had. And thanks to the values and the confidence that they instilled in me, I saw the fact that I was a digital professional experience would help to navigate my career, and I'm sure help to navigate your, your careers as well, and sustain me during life's challenges and setbacks were the unwavering, and has always been the unwavering support of family, friends, and colleagues. I have had the good fortune to be surrounded by people who have believed in me, and who have encouraged and inspired me. And that's what we need to do for our young lawyers and our youth who haven't even started to think about being lawyers. I also benefited from people who encouraged me to, to take risks, to, to work hard, and to never, never give up, and to handle life's setbacks, and to know that despite those setbacks, that opportunities would come my way at another point. I know that we are brief um, this evening, but I do want to share with you uh, one personal setback that I had because in many ways it does define me in terms of, I believe, the strength that I needed to have 
to get to where I am today and to go through life. But 11 years ago, after battling cancer for eight years, I lost my husband. And there I was, um, thinking that I had it all back. Eight years of battling cancer, you can imagine what a setback that is and how worn down you feel. Uh, and then you have two young girls. And uh, the thought, even though I was, a, was told I was a great prosecutor in Middlesex County, a real trial lawyer, the thought of walking into a courtroom again and trying the case to a jury uh, didn't even occur to me. I didn't even know how I could even get out of bed. But I have to say that with the help of family and friends and colleagues, here I am today. So, We go through losses in life, we go through illnesses in life, we go through financial hurdles in life. We need to continue to believe, and we need to let others and support others to believe that we shouldn't just completely give in to a setback. And another trait that I think has helped me throughout the years is that it's been very important to seize those opportunities that present themselves. You know, when it was announced that Senator Kennedy was setting up his advisory committee to pick a United States attorney for Massachusetts, there were many rumblings in the legal community. Uh, and the media uh, kept writing stories about, uh, you know, who's going to be the U.S. attorney, who's got the great shoe in, uh, basically that this was just a, a setup. And I thought about applying, but I kept, get, I kept talking myself out of it. Uh, Again, the support of family and friends. I had a friend who told me, you know, you've got nothing to lose by applying for this. And then again, I had someone else terribly, uh, incredibly important in my life who's here tonight, my fiance, Tom Dolan, who I have. He's like, are you crazy? He says, you've got nothing to lose. And you've got, you've got great experience. You've got great life history. You know, so what? If you don't get it, you don't get it. You don't think you're going to get it. So why not take the risk? And you know, I'm glad I listened to you. One, one, one time alone that I uh, I have to say, thank you, Tom. And I thank so many of my friends that did encourage me because of who I am. I say again also that it's really important that we teach our young people, our young lawyers, that they be engaged and that they not be afraid to take chances. You know, I, I say this a lot to, to young kids especially when I speak at different schools and community um, organizations. We, can't, we don't pick our families. We're born into the family that we're born into for better or for worse. But we do pick our friends, and we pick our partners. And so it's important that we guide young people to pick partners that will help them to survive and succeed in life. Now having said all that, now I want to get more into a, another platform here. I'm profoundly aware that the, the same path that led me to where I am today was also cleared by many other people, people who broke down barriers ahead of me. And we here are indebted to every advocate, activist, leader, suffragist that came before us, who decided to fight for the rights and opportunities that we now have. Those are the real trailblazers. And just as we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, we must now carry on their work. Each one of us has the ability, and indeed the duty, to enable others of Hispanic descent to realize the extraordinary potential that they have and to open more doors of opportunity for them. We have the responsibility to pave the way for those who follow us. Although we've accomplished much, and you see it here with uh, Puerto Ricans and Latinos in elected positions, members of the judiciary, 
uh, community activists, business executives, we still have a lot to do. I'm not going to go, I had a section here about all the different failings also that we're dealing with, the struggles that we're dealing with in terms of, especially the Puerto Ricans, um, the lack of education, uh, the inability to graduate from college.
Garcia is a former assistant city attorney in Miami. In 2007, we launched the Latino Affairs Department in, for the New York Yankees and is currently the department's chair. This department is responsible for the Yankees' participation in several community and cultural events, including the season scouts. We thank them for their continued generosity and support to the PRBA. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium the next recipient of the Accessory Community Service Award, Mr. Manuel Manny Garcia. And she also 
also founded a strong advocate of the women. She started with this Akata, the Akata constantly launching that has gone on for 15 years, honoring women. Not the women that we traditionally think about, the women who are toiling in the fields every day and who may not go recognized for the great work that they do. But she has this incredible movie luncheon every year for these women. And many of you in this room have been honored by her. But she really believes in empowering this community. She also really believes in changing the history and recording the correct history about this community and making sure that everybody else knows it. The other thing is that she has been feeling herself passionately linked to the cause of reentry. She had a family member who she had forgiven that he was going to come out of prison and have an exceptional life. And she gave up herself like I've never seen anyone give up herself. Today, that brother of hers is now in college, working with faculty, and doing the work. She was so moved by Andrew's experience that she decided to really commit herself to expand that. And now she's giving hours and hours of her voluntary time. I don't know if she has the time. But she gives hours and hours of time to exit the program in East Harlem that is really committed to re entry, and that's for Sana. The other piece that you're going to know is for Sana the mother. Rosanna has two amazing children. And the one thing about leadership is that sometimes we give so much to our community that sometimes we forget to give back to our family. And I'm so proud of so many of the leaders we have in this room because you can see the advancement of their children, and their leadership has never thwarted the advancement of their children. So I have this wonderful little wife, Dora Aliana, uh, just like I have Dora Aliana, I can't stand it, and Elisa and Taylor are growing up so fast for me. And then she has Jamie, who is now one of the Macaulay scholars at CUNY, and we are very, very proud of that. So for Sana and I love her, yes, you can go back.
it is because we stand on the shoulders of those who spoke up when others were silent. I give you three high reasons, three things to make it possible for those of us who are here to be here tonight. Please stand up and give them a round of applause for a fantastic day of service.
Robert Wagner signed the permit. So I thought we could come up and check out of here. Now, this is the thing. I am sure that if we look into our history, if we talk to our elders, not the seven five, we talk to our elders, those that are still with us, you will see that in 1957, I am sure there were young, out of common Puerto Rican lawyers who participated in that meeting. Isn't it strange that the Puerto Rican Day Parade is celebrating its 54th anniversary and the Puerto Rican Violin Association is celebrating its 54th anniversary? And you still go Congratulations, Dr. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much.
Oh, he isn't a soldier. He force marched me, <laughs> you might say, through the body, and I mean in the body, okay? Through the depression, through the gang wars that I was surrounded with, and the drugs when it arrived, and the general basic mob brought it, okay? He saw me through all of that. So, I treasure that memory. So whatever I'm awarded here tonight, I will do it in his name and his honor. And uh, <laughs> without him, believe me, without him, I would have been long lost from my desire and a more of a green head and blue I don't know if I should take more for But what brings what occurs to me at this moment, and there was an allusion made to it, uh, and I will touch upon it in Spanish, but it, because it's something that would echo the way my father always instilled this in, in me, and was the words of Otto Hibayi, Rafael Hernández. El pase lo del pase, por donde quiera que ande, okay? Por donde quiera que ande, yo seré Puerto Rican. Just yesterday, 
did, he went to our high school, our old high school, uh, 100 Watch High School, and he met with the junior there who would be directing next year's musical, and he's helping advise her. Um, and it's not just artists he inspires, he inspires me every day, every morning he says to me, um, go, go with your heart and your brain. Be with your heart and your brain. Be good today. <laughs> So, um, you know, he's the best cheerleader that I've ever had. His enthusiasm for life is infectious. And it's my deep honor to present to my husband, Yuan Hominanda. Because your parents worked that job uh, that was torture. 
And they made miracles happen so you could wear a nice suit and tie and stand up in court. And I am so sorry that I could not fulfill my father's dream of being a lawyer, but I did the next best thing. I married one. Thank you so much. Esta nena no para de hablar. Ay, Dios mío, ¿qué pasa? Uy, ella. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. And before microwaves, which I remember the age before microwaves, when my food got cold, I would talk through it, and I still had to eat this frozen food on my plate because I was talking, talking so much. But uh, such a thank you to uh, parents for letting us dream and be what we want to be. Um, before I welcome our last uh, presenter to make some closing remarks, uh, this is about the time that I say goodnight to you all. And I just want to tell you that it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And um, I was at Harvard as an actor there. And I remember every time I would tell someone, I would go, oh, I'm going to go to Harvard. They're like, oh, you're going to be a lawyer? And I'm like, oh, you're going to go to Harvard. Well, I learned through this organization many, many years back that I don't have to want to go. You guys are a wonderful group of people who do so much, and I can only hope that my voice and my heart uh, can do as much as you do each and every day that you go to work. So um, I will try my best to do that in my capacity. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Y de todo corazón, gracias, and thank you so much for being here.
but we are also here to be mentors and role models. So my ultimate goal this year is to work with our members and supporters to implement the very pipeline that you've all been speaking of tonight for our future leaders. A pipeline program that's going to engage students at a young age to teach them not only about the law, but to believe in their ability to make things happen and take control of their lives and their future at a very young age. And encourage them not only to seek careers in the legal profession, but just to move on go beyond high school into college and graduate levels and become professionals of our community. My goal is ambitious, so I humbly ask all of you to look around and make a commitment to our future by continuing to support the Puerto Rican Bar Association not only tonight, but in the years to come. Thank you all for being here and for continuing to support us. And I really hope that you join me because I know that by myself I cannot put out my plan, but with your help I know that we can take the future generation to the place where they should be and they will be. So thank you very much for being here and I look forward to another year uh, with you all. Thank you.